21st Precinct, Sergeant Burns. What do you mean you were robbed? Oh, broke into your apartment. Well, where is this? 761? What apartment number? Was that B or C? You are in the muster room at the 21st Precinct, the nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. Yes, sir. All right. I'll send an officer right over there. Yes, sir. They'll be there in a few minutes. You just wait. That's right. Yes, sir. Just wait there. 21st Precinct. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their persons, their homes, and their property is my job. My job and the job of the 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants of whom I'm the boss. My name is Kennelly, Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. It was 9.30 p.m., I returned to the precinct house from patrol and walked into the muscle room where Lieutenant Snyder was on duty as desk officer and Sergeant Burns was on the boxes. Hello, Captain. Sergeant? How was doing? Oh, nothing much. Lieutenant King's been wanting to talk to you. Uh, is he upstairs? Yes, sir, I think so. All right, ring up there and tell him I'm back while I sign the blotter. Yes, sir. Hello, Lieutenant. 21st Squad, Detective Novak. This is Sergeant Burns on PS. Would you tell Lieutenant King that Captain Kennelly is back in the house? Lieutenant King? Yes, sir. He's on his way downstairs. TT order came through just after you left, Captain. Winter overcoats on the 4 to 12 tour, November 8th. Mm. Have McCarthy posted on the bulletin boards. I already told him, Captain. Oh, excuse me. Tom, go ahead. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Burns. Lady, I told you before, there's nothing we can do about that. We chase robbers. We're not plumbers. Yes, I know, Lady. Captain. Matt? What's doing? Lady, ma'am, I talked to you in your office, Captain. Sure. I'll be in my office, Sergeant. Yes, sir. I can't send a policeman over there for that, lady. Well, what have you got, Matt? Go ahead. Sit down. Yes, sir. Now, what is it? Looks like we've got a cop in a jam. From here? Yes, sir. Who? Oh, I don't know yet. Well, what's it all about? Well, the commander of the 6th Squad called up here about an hour ago. Two uniformed men jumped a burglar coming out of an apartment building. I had to chase him into the courtyard, but they finally collared him. Yeah? They brought him into the station house. He admitted he was in an apartment there. He dropped a pillowcase during the chase. Had a portable radio, an electric razor, a few other things in it. He came out of the apartment. They took him up to the squad down there and started to talk to him about other deals. The boy admits to about 25 burglaries. Well, what's that got to do with us? Well, the boy, his name is Ruston. Leroy Ruston told him he burglarized an apartment in this precinct three or four weeks ago. Uh-huh. Had a couple of suits and jewelry, good stuff, a gun, about $600 in cash. Said he came down the service entrance and walked out onto the street. Said as soon as he hit the sidewalk, a cop was there and shoved him against the building. Said he thought he was through. Cop went through the stuff and he admitted he burglarized this apartment. Said the cop went through his pockets and found the cash. Yeah. Said the cop put the money in his own pocket, gave him back all the merchandise, hit him on a can with his nightstick and told him to get out of the precinct. Said he ran to the subway station, got on a train... Haven't been back on the east side since. Hmm. What does it sound like to you? Oh, uh, got a cigarette, Matt? Yeah, sure, Captain. Thanks. Thanks. You're welcome. Well, I, uh, I went through our squeals. October 5th, Mr. Philip Nayland, 761 East 68th Street, a lawyer with officers at 156 Wall, he reported his apartment had been broken into. Three suits of his, a diamond ring, a wristwatch, a diamond pin belonging to his wife, 32 caliber S and W revolver for which he had a permit, and $575 in cash were taken. Well, that sounds like the same deal this boy was talking about. Yes, sir, it does. It checks his story. At least that he burglarized the house. He reported this on the 5th? Yes, sir. Well, when did the burglary occur? Night of the 4th? Could have been either the 2nd, 3rd, or 4th, Captain. This was a weekend. Mr. and Mrs. Nalen left the city Friday afternoon to spend a weekend in the country. They discovered the burglary when they got back Monday morning. Uh, what time of night did all this occur? Did you find that out? No, sir, not yet. Lieutenant McInerney told me they were still questioning the boy down there at the 6th. He wanted to let me know what they were developing. Yeah. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Burns. 
Sergeant, uh, 761 East 68th Street is on what post? Uh, post number 9, Captain. All right, Sergeant. Get out the telephone record and the post list for the 4 to 12 and the 12 to 8 tours for uh, October 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Yes, sir. And bring them in here and bring the blotter, too, right away. Is something the matter, Captain? Yes, yeah, something's the matter. Get those records out and bring them in here. Yes, sir. For this and other purposes, the records of the precinct contain a detailed account of the movements of every member of the command. The blotter, for instance, shows for each tour in the handwriting of the desk officer, the assignments of patrolmen to posts and motor patrol duty, the time each post is vacated for meal periods, all post changes and movements during a tour of duty, and a notation of the nature, time, and location of duty performed by each member of the command. From these records, Lieutenant King and I narrowed the possibilities down to four patrolmen who would work post number nine on either the night or late tours, October 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th. In order to narrow the list still farther, we drove to the 6th Precinct at 135 Charles Street in Greenwich Village to interview the burglary suspect. There, I stopped at the desk to sign the blotter as a visiting captain. Then, with Lieutenant King, I went upstairs to the 6th Detective Squad. Help you? We're in the job. This is Captain Kennelly of the 21st Precinct. I'm Lieutenant King. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, Lieutenant McInerney's in his office. Thanks. Six squad. Ed. Oh, come here, Matt. Yes, sir. This is the Texas. Uh, you want to close the door, Matt? Yeah, sure. Uh, Lieutenant McInerney, the squad commander, Captain Kennelly. Well, how are you, Captain? Well, I don't know. Yes, sir. I get how you feel. You want to sit down? Yeah, thanks. What about this boy, Ed? Well, he's a good boy, all right. He's done one bit in Sing Sing for burglary. I think he's been in the 25 or 30 flats all over town. Maybe more. He can't remember more. What about the story he tells? Well, unfortunately, it sounds pretty straight, Captain. It checks with a squeal we've got. Cop had his hands in a good burglar. Nine chances out of ten, he was gotten a commendation and a promotion to detective. Pay raise for one year alone would have amounted to as much as he took off that boy. That uh, cop is an idiot. A little more than an idiot. An idiot with everything else, Captain. Have you got him spotted? Well, we've got it narrowed down to four. The complainants were away Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights. Could have happened on any of those nights, on either the 4 to 12 or the 12 to 8 tours. You didn't fix the time any closer, Jed? No, no. I thought I'd wait until you got down here at your squeal. Thought you'd want to talk to him about it. You know, where is the boy? In the detention room. I'll have him brought in. Rod! Yes, sir. Bring that Leroy in here. Yes, sir. You've uh, got it down to four, huh? Yeah, that's right. We've got one man who was working the four to twelve on Saturday and Sunday nights. He was swinging Friday night. Another man was working the twelve to eight. Was swinging Saturday night. Those two men and the two who relieved them. Well, if you could fix it either on the four to twelve or the twelve to eight, that would knock two of them out of the box, Matt. Yeah. If we could get the right night from the boy, it'd be done to the man. Uh, this Leroy was pretty vague about dates and times. He's been in so many flats, he doesn't know one from the other. Yeah, who is it? Come in. Go ahead, Leroy. Where? Over here. Just said I was sleeping back there. He woke me up. From now on, Leroy, your time's not your own. Uh, sit down there. Yes. Okay, Leroy, well, thanks. Yes. Leroy, this is Captain Kennelly and Lieutenant King. They're from uptown, the 21st. They want to know something about that officer taking the money off him. Oh, yeah. You told Lieutenant McInerney it was five or six hundred dollars. Uh, that's right, yeah, five or six hundred. You burglarized an apartment there. You took some suits, the guns, some jewelry, and the cash. When did you have time to stop and count the money? Well, you know how human nature is. I found the cash in the drawer there. The first thing I was tempted to do was look at it. I saw a couple of hundreds, a couple of fifties, and tens, and twenties. I figured five to six hundred. I shoved it in my pocket. What'd you do with the gun you got out of there? Oh, I don't care for guns. I figure you have a gun on your hip, you're going to shoot it. I never did go in for that kind of heavy stuff. I gave it to a very good friend of mine. What's his name? His name is Jack, Jack Truro. But he don't have it. He sold it, he told me. A lot of nerves. I give him the gun and he sold it. To a stranger. Where is this Jack Truro? Can we locate him? Oh, it's the easiest thing in the world, but he don't have the gun. Oh, where is he, Leroy? He's in the tombs. He got picked up last week on a deal. Where'd he get picked up? In Times Square. I told him a dozen times if he's going to go in a public place like Times Square, he shouldn't wear a sports jacket that's three sizes too large for him. You know, a real fine sports jacket. Cashmere, what do you call it? Well, anyway, he got it out of some flat and he fell in love with the cloth. The cloth was fine, but in a million years it couldn't have been his jacket. Some detective stopped him on Broadway and said, Hey, bud, where'd you get the coat? That was that. 
Well, that's what comes to being too much a close horse, you know? Yeah, uh, to get back to the night, you got the gun and the money up on the 21st. Oh, I don't know it's the 21st. I couldn't swear. It was. You remember what night it was? What night? What do you mean? Well, it had to be either Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. No, I couldn't remember what night it was. I've been working almost every night. You know, my memory doesn't serve me on that. It was during the World Series, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. You know, you're right. When you come to think of it, it was during the World Series. I remember I was in the flat. I, I was going around looking through drawers and in the closets, and I found some rain checks for the game the day before. Box seats. I figured, boy, what a lucky guy I'm in. Box seats. I wished it was me. Who were you for? In the series? Yeah, in the series. The Brooks. I had a $20 bet with Jack. Jack has died in the wolf for the Yanks. Oh, yeah. I was feeling good because the Brooks win it after dropping the first two. It was the same day, I remember. Earth can stand 14, a new series record, you remember. And it was Friday night you were in that flat on East 68. Well, I don't know if it was Friday night. I don't know if it was East 68. All I know it was the day Earth can stand 14. That was Friday, October 2nd. If you say so, okay. What time of night was it, Leroy? Time of the night? Yeah. Well, that also would be kind of hard to say. Well, let's start at midnight, huh? Would you say it was before or after midnight? Well, does it make a difference? Yeah. What'd you do before you went over and broke into that flat? Let's see. Uh, I don't know. But I can tell you what I did after. I, I met Jack, and he and I, we uh, went to my place to drop the suits, and it's come like that. Jack sure figures in your life a lot, doesn't he? Well, he's my best friend. Oh. And then from my place, we went over to meet a girlfriend of his after she got off work. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it must have been 10, 30, or 11 I hit the flat because this girlfriend of Jack's, she works in the cafeteria down here in the village over on 7th Avenue. She gets off at midnight. You're sure about that? I'm telling you. Well, that pretty well sets the time for you, Captain. Friday, October 2nd, during the 4 to 12 tour. Yeah. Leroy, you think you'd be able to identify the officer who took the money off you? Well, to tell you the truth, I don't know about that. Well, what did he look like? A cop with a blue suit. Was he young? Was he tall? What? Look, Cap, I wasn't interested in what he looked like. Young, tall, short, I don't know. All I could see was a cop. I was nailed. When he took the money, slapped me with his stick and said, go, I win. I didn't turn around to see what color eyes he had. Well, we're going to give you a chance to identify him, if you can. If I can, I will. I opened up and told you about this, didn't I? If I didn't want to help you, I could have crammed. Cop catches me, takes me in, I got no beef against him. But if he turns out to be a bigger thief than me, I got no regrets, no regrets at all. Except maybe my good friend Jack is laying in the tombs, all alone in the world. Yeah, well, don't worry about that, Leroy. You'll be down there to keep him company. Lieutenant King, Lieutenant McInerney of the 6th Squad, and I continued to interrogate the burglary suspect, Leroy Ruston. The officer he referred to was most likely Patrolman Philip Austin, who the record showed was assigned to post number 9 during the 4-12 to 12 tour on Friday, October 2nd. It was decided to continue the investigation at the 21st, and arrangements were made to transport the prisoner in the custody of Patrolman Nestico of the 6th Precinct, one of the arresting officers. Before we left, I phoned through CB to Lieutenant Snyder, the desk officer at the 21st, and gave him instructions to detain Patrolman Austin and all other members of his squad, which again was working the 4-12 to 12 tour for my arrival. At 12.10, after having been relieved from his post, Patrolman Austin returned to the station house and walked through the front door into the muster room. Austin? Yes, Sergeant, come here. What is it, Sergeant? Just a second. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Burns. Lieutenant who? Lieutenant Gorman isn't due in here until 8 a.m. Yes, sir. That's all right. Hey, what's, what's the trouble, Sergeant? Captain wants to hold your platoon. Yeah? He's on his way uptown. Wait for him in the back room. Why? Just wait. Oh, listen, Sergeant. My wife's brother has a birthday party tonight. I told him I'd get over there as soon after 12 as I could. He'll have another birthday next year. What do you say, Phil? Farrell? Yes, sir. Come here. What's it all about? Want to give me, Sergeant? Yeah, wait in the back room with the captain. He'll be back any minute. Oh, what's trouble? There's no trouble. Just wait. Okay, Sergeant. And don't change from your uniforms. Leave them on. Listen, Sergeant, he's liable to be another hour. Will you stop giving me an argument? Now, go ahead. Sure, Sergeant. Come on, Phil. Yeah. I don't know. Why do I have to get all the dirty details? Should have beat the living daylights out of me. Oh, it's not that bad. Hi, fellas. Hi, Carl. Anybody know what this is all about? Ah, oh, beat me. Big deal. Come on, Austin. Sit down. No sense getting worked up about it. I don't know if the captain wants to see us. Where is he? Look, we're all in the same boat. Yeah, but you got no place to go except home in the bed. Every time somebody can think of some extra detail, they think of us. Don't get mad until you find out what it is. Hi, Austin. What's going on? You know as much as we do. Grab a seat. 
Oh, they probably got the midnight snack on the table over there right now. And the beer is just flowing. Stop aggravating yourself, will you? Well, what do you expect me to do? I'm out walking a post for eight hours. When the tour is over, my time should be my own. This is something I'm going to take up with the PBA delegate. Watch it, Skipper. I'm sorry to hold you, man. It's all right, Captain. Hello, Lieutenant. Now. Lieutenant King and I would like to have you stay around a few minutes to help us out on something. That all right with you? Yes. Uh, how long will it take, Captain? Oh, not very long. I have to go into my office. We'll be ready for you in a few minutes. Come on, Max. Okay, Captain. Oh, that's Arthur. Yeah. Haven't you met him before? I've seen him around, yes, sir. Oh, Sergeant. Yes, sir, Captain. You're getting the other men in here? Yes, sir. The rest of them should be in right away. All right, Sergeant. When they get here, you send them into the back room. Then let me know. I'll be in my office. Yes, sir. Sergeant, would you ring upstairs? Have Novak come see me in the captain's office. Yes, sir. What kind of a record has Austin got in the department, Captain? Oh, just there. Good educational background. Two years in medical school. He was in the fire department first. Well, switched jobs. Nothing outstanding in this department. Up on charges once about three years ago for leaving his post without permission. Not in this precinct. Lost five days' pay. No trouble with him since. He isn't the best man I've got, but as far as I know, he's been doing his job. Go ahead, man. Thanks, Mr. Go. Well, what's going to happen? Don't get in a hurry, Leroy. You've got plenty of time. I'm not getting in a hurry. I'm just getting hungry, that's all. Is there a delicatessen close I'd like to send out for a sandwich? It was just my luck to get college right before supper. You'll get something to eat in a little while. Well, there's no time like the present. Leroy, you told us to burglarize the flat. On your way out, a police officer called you. That's right. That's the honest to goodness truth. Now, we want you to identify that police officer. Well, I told you I didn't know whether I could do that. Well, you stood there and talked to him, didn't you? Well, for how long? It was only a couple of seconds, like that. That's all. That's long enough to get a look. Well, it was in the nighttime. It was dark. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. Where was this? Right outside the service entrance of that apartment building? Yeah, that's right. Right outside. As soon as you came out that door. Yeah. It was like he was waiting there for me when I came out the door. Listen, couldn't you send up for a sandwich for me? Soon, Leroy. I'd like a corned beef on rye with coleslaw and some pickle also coffee. Yeah, as soon as we get through here. Yes, who is it? Novak. Come in. You want me, Lieutenant? Yeah, Novak, I want you. Yes, sir. Tell you what I want you to do. Right down that, uh, I'm entitled to get something to eat before you ship me down to this home. The bill of fare down there ain't nothing to write home about, you know. I saw this girl, of course, with my good friend Jack the other day. She was down there the same. He says the bill of fare hasn't improved any since the last year or so either. And Jack ain't hard to please when it comes to food. You're giving any old slop and he's happy. All right, get going, back. Yes, sir. All right, I guess we're about set, Captain. Set for what? To give you a look. See if you can identify that police officer. Well, I told you I didn't know whether I could do that. I couldn't tell him from Adam. Well, we think we can, Leroy. We think we know who he is. We want you to give a look and see if you agree with us. There are 20,000 members of the police department of the city of New York. With their families, the force comprises a community larger than all but 94 of the most populous cities in the country. As in any group so large and from such varied background, occasional deviation of character is expected. And the methods of dealing with it are provided for in the laws of the state, the rules and regulations of the department, and the manual of procedure. These provisions afford the same protection to an accused police officer as to any other suspect. In all criminal cases, identification is usually the most important criterion. In this one, we proceeded to determine whether the burglary suspect, Leroy Rustins, could identify the police officer he accused. In addition to the principal suspect, Patrolman Austin, a dozen other officers were waiting in the back room. When we were ready, they were formed into a line, marched into the muster room. who's made an accusation against a patrolman. I want to see right here and now if he can identify that patrolman. Oh, Farrell, would you go into my office and ask them to come in here? Yes, sir. Right away, Captain. What's this cop supposed to be accused of, Captain? Among other things, receiving stolen property and failing to take proper police action. All right. Come over here, Leroy. I'll come there, but I don't know what good it'll do. Now, there's a squad of police officers here, Leroy. Take a good look at every one of them. Yeah. Then you tell us if you see the man who took the money off you. And Leroy. Yeah. 
You say this police officer spoke to you. If you want to hear the voice of any one of these men, just ask him to talk. If he asks any of you to talk, state your rank, name, and shield number. Go ahead, Leroy. Take a look. to hear this fellow say something. Go ahead. Name, rank, and shield number. This woman's John Farrell. 24381. No. And let this one talk. Go ahead. It's Roman Philip Austin, 31650. Would you come again? Patrolman Philip Austin, 31650. No. I can't make him. I don't see him. You want to take another try down the line? I can't make him. It was too dark there. I told you that. All right. Orson, Sal, wait in the back room for a while. Sergeant, dismiss the squad. Sir. Come on, Leroy. Okay. I'm coming. All right. All right, let's go back in my office. I'll go any place. Captain, how long do you think we'll be? Not very long, Austin, I hope. Yes, sir. Let's go. Look at me like that. What did you want me to do? Say it was somebody if I wasn't positively sure? What do you take me for? Did you think it was any of the men there? Didn't I tell you it was dark? Go ahead, inside. Lieutenant. Yes, Novak. Sit down over there, Leroy. What I want to know is when I'm going to get something to eat. I went over there, Lieutenant. We'll get you something to eat, Leroy. Right. Well, Lieutenant, Lieutenant, I could stop the death around here. Well, we wouldn't let you starve, Leroy. Good job. Leroy, there's something I'd like to get straight. Sure. You said you couldn't see the cop over there because it was pitch dark. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. At the service entrance? Yeah, the side door, the service entrance. Novak. Yes, Lieutenant. You just came back from that apartment over there, right? Yes, sir. Did you look at the service entrance where the cop was supposed to have collared Leroy? Yes, sir. Was it dark? No, there's a light over the door. The super told me it's never out at night. In addition, that door is right under a street light. Would you say it's light enough over there to see a man's face? Lieutenant, it's light enough to read a newspaper. What have you got to say about that, Leroy? Listen, maybe the electric was off there. The electric night. wasn't off, Leroy. You're just a plain liar. You've been wasting our time all night. No, I've been giving it to you straight. You've been going around corners. No, we're not going to waste any more time. What about it? Did you see that copper, didn't you? You don't want to waste any more time, huh? No. All right, I won't waste any more time. I didn't see any cop because there wasn't any cop. Then why the story? Well... Uh, it's very involved. No, this has been very involved all night. Yeah, Cap, you got a point. Well, I told the story for two reasons. One is I told it before to my good friend Jack. You see, he was in that flat with me. I didn't tell him about the money when I found it. Well, after we got out, we broke up and met later, just like I told you, at the cafeteria where his girl works. Well, I, I figured this flat we made might belong to some celebrity, and the papers would have the story and tell exactly how much cash was took. So I made up the little tale about the cop to Jack. He bought it because being a thief, he believes that's the logical thing for a cop to do. That's what he would think. Yeah. So when I got collared tonight, I knew I was going to see Jack in the tombs again, so I stuck with the story because he's big. Boy, how big he is. In addition to which, if I played it along and told the same story, maybe I'd get a break, you know? Then the newspapers and the DA and everybody go for that stuff. I thought I'd get a break out of it. But I was honest. I didn't identify any cop. I didn't get anybody in no jam, not me. No, you didn't identify anybody because you might have picked somebody who wasn't anywhere near that spot. Well, that's the point. I grant you that. I'll be right back, man. Yeah, but you still got to give me credit, huh? Captain? Yes, Sergeant. Is everything all right? Yeah. The boy was lying. He pulled the whole story out of the air. Makes me feel a little better. I feel better too, Fred. Much better. There's nothing worse than doubt. I had to know one way or the other. But he's in the clear. Definitely in the clear. Austin and them are waiting. Shall I let them go, Captain? No, I will. Thanks. You men. Yes, sir, Captain. 
You can get changed now and go home. Yes, sir. Uh, just a second, Austin. Yes, sir. Never mind. Good night. I'll see you tomorrow. Night, Captain. Uh, how do you like that? What? We have to stay around here on our own time on some deal we got nothing to do with. We don't even get a word of thanks. Well, what can you do? It's a trouble. There's nothing you can do. It's the job. First precinct, Sergeant Burns. Where? That's East what? East 77th? Talk into the phone. Do both of them have guns? Now, where is this? In the liquor store? Are you there now? All right. And so it goes. All right, around the, the clock, right through on. the week, every day, every year. A police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh-and-blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring, or the brass ring can catch anyone. 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way the police work in the world's largest city, is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolman's Benevolent Association, an organization of more than 20,000 members of the police department, city of New York. Everett Sloan in the role of Captain Kennelly... Ken Lynch as Lieutenant King. Featured in tonight's cast were Larry Haynes, Wendell Holmes, Chuck Webster, Frank Reddick, Bill Quinn, and Phil Sterling. Written and directed by Stanley Niss. Produced for CBS Radio by John Ives. Art Hannah speaking.